Uh, this is one of the most important messages that I have sent to my, my friends in the United States of America. It all began in Manila, Philippines. I had been invited by former President Marcus to a special meeting where he spoke to dignitaries and, and to his parliament. On one side of me was the ambassador from the United States. On the other side was the, uh, the cardinal, the Archbishop of Manila. And it was interesting to be there for two hours. I walked into the streets of Manila and something close to a riot. Most of it was against America rather than related to the Philippines. Signs said, go home white monkeys being jogged up and down by children. Others said, America's imperialist, jogging up and down. And I walked out among those people, and uh, I, I told one boy, I said, son, do you mean I'm a white monkey? He said, no, sir. Well, I said, well, that's what the sign says. He said, yes. I said, why are you carrying it? He said, I was given a peso to carry it. I said, you really should throw that down. You may get hurt. And so he threw it down and I stomped it to pieces where he couldn't pick it up anymore. I walked over to the boy that was carrying a sign, America's imperialist, and I said, son, you're a student of history? He said, no, sir. I said, uh, why are you carrying that sign? Well, he said, I was on the street over there and they gave me a peso to carry it. I said, that's the way riots begin, you know. I said, well, do you know anything about America? And he said, no, sir. I said, my country gave your country freedom twice and our young men died twice in order to make your country free, free from the Spaniards and then free from the Japanese. He said, I've heard of that. I said, we're not imperialists. He said, no, sir. I said, then throw the sign down. He threw it down and I stomped it to pieces. But I love America very much. And by this time, tears is running down my face and I was ashamed to be in the crowd. So I walked two blocks from the government buildings to our great church in Manila, Philippines. Sitting at my desk, weeping, telling God how much I loved America and hated for it to be hurt by people who didn't understand us. God spoke to me and to my spirit and said, son, I am sending you home to live. He says, you can go overseas for a few days and minister, but your headquarters will be in America. I couldn't quite understand that because my family and I were living in Manila at that time. This was our second time to pastor the church there. And I said, well, why, Lord? He said, I'm going to give you seven reasons why I'm sending you home. And I just took my pen out and began to write them down uh, as to why I was to come to America. And he said, I want you to help save America. And I said, Lord, I am willing to. He said, it's my bastion of freedom and, and not, only, not only of the earth, but a freedom in, in the great world of mind, a f freedom of minds, a freedom to think in that country, and it, it spreads throughout the world from there, and I need you to help save that. And I said, Lord, I'm willing to be anything for you. Then he spoke to me and said, through television, I'll give you a million souls. And I said, Lord, I'd do anything for a million souls. He says, I'll give you a million souls through television if you will go home. But he says, here are seven things that you're going to see in America. And so the first one, he said, America will depart from the faith. It will depart from the faith of its fathers. It will depart from the fundamental churches and, and from the fundamental preachers. And I, I said, oh, Lord, tell me about that. And he says in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, the word says, now the Spirit speaketh expressly, and that's with a capital S, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And God spoke to me and said, now this, this is the latter times. And, and, and they shall depart from their traditional church. They shall depart from the Bible. They shall depart from the religion of their parents. They will just go out from it. And, and, and I sat there saying, well, you, you can't get out of a car till you get into a car. You can't go out of a house till you get into a house. And that means that there are going to be millions of people who will walk out on their faith, abandon their faith, and leave their faith. And I became very hurt 
inside. God said, you will, you will see it. Millions will not go to church and not serve me and, uh, and will just leave their faith. And, and I said, yes, Lord, I'd do anything to bring America back to its original faith and its trust in the mighty God. And it, while I paused for a moment, the Lord spoke to me again, and he said, not only will they depart from their faith, but it says, Eastern religions that you have dealt with for many years, and, and, and uh, pagan religions will take root in America and will flourish there. I said, oh God, no. How, how, could, they, how, how could they believe in, 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 in strange gods? And, and, and how could they do that? And the Lord said, they will do it. And, and so the second thing that God told me was that Eastern religions would become a prominent part of American life, that Hinduism would invade our country. Now, we have seen this. We've seen thousands of people take up yoga. And, and yoga just means one thing, that you submit yourself to an unseen force and, and that, you start, that you start saying words in the Hindu language that you do not understand. And, and that you are praising and praying to a Hindu God at that time. And you've opened yourself up for demon power to enter you that you might be possessed of the devil. And, and uh, Hinduism is growing in this country. The, the Hare Krishnas are showing you how Hinduism can grow. And they come in with a lie saying, full of love, full of love, full of love. They don't know what the word means. They just pick that word up. It's not in their language. They only picked it up. In, in our language, and what they're doing is seducing people to leave and abandon their faith in God, the great and mighty God who created the heavens and the earth, and to, and, and to go into some pagan religion that has no, no, no hope, no hope in this life or in the life to come. And so I, I thought of that, and the Lord said, that's also in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, that not only will they depart from the faith, they won't just walk out and quit, but they will give heed. That means they will serve and they will listen to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. That means spirits that are telling lies. Seducing them. Just like Eve was seduced in the Garden of Eden into taking of the fruit of the tree and brought havoc upon the human race, that they will in the last days give heed to these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, the devil's doctrines are that he doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that Jesus Christ's blood can cleanse us from our sins, that Jesus Christ is coming again to receive us unto himself, and that we shall live forever with him in heaven. Everything that we believe, the devil doesn't believe, and he believes the opposite of what we believe, and that's what's being perpetrated in this country today, doctrines of devils, which means the very opposite of doctrines of truth and life that come from God. I, I, I couldn't, under, I couldn't, you know, sitting at my desk, I couldn't believe it. I said, God, will this really, will this truly come to pass? He says, you will see it. And I am seeing it. And you are seeing it. Then I said, Lord, uh, what more? He said, besides oriental religions, in the third place here, he says that cults and demon worship and satanic worship will become prominent in America. And I said, Lord, how could that be that a nation that was built on the Bible that came out of Europe where Satan worship has always been for many hundreds of years, uh, how, how could it be that they would go back in, into satanic uh, worship? And the Lord said unto me that they would come back to fetishes and, 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 and carry holy things around with them and that they will have covens and in, in these uh, covens they will make sacrifices and, and they will and they will be just like the pagans of long ago. You can't imagine having grown up in a society of, of, of evangelicalism that, that the Lord would be telling me that our country, that many people in our country would go backwards hundreds of years to worshiping idols and to worshiping fetishes and to be worshiping and identifying themselves with satanic religion satanic religion that was related to human sacrifice because in the covens in this country they have discovered 
baby bones where they have offered they have offered up human sacrifice unto demon gods in our in our own country and i said lord i'm willing to return to america if if you need me there god says i will use you in ways i've never used you before and i will place you before millions of people for them to hear you teach the word and in the final moments you will be greater than in the first moments and that you will stand up strong and tall to instruct and many will listen. It says many will listen that I will, I will give you an honor among them that they will say, what does he have to say? Uh, he, he, he has been here a long time. He understands truth and, and they will listen to you. And I said, God, I will go anywhere if I can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. God says, I want you to do that. I said, what more? He says in the fourth place, there will come a terrible and awful spirit of rebellion in America, a spirit of rebellion. And, and I said, oh, God, what do you mean? He says, the greatest place you will see it is in the homes. The home within itself that used to be the place of tenderness and the place of love and the retreat from the world to come inside the home where your little family was, where you could say anything you wanted to say and laugh when you wanted to laugh, and, and, and you were home. You were home, folks, and nobody else was there. The door was closed, and you had those that were nearest and dearest. It says, a spirit of rebellion from the devil shall come and will rip the homes to pieces. If you could have been there, you would have given $1,000 just to have seen a human like myself start weeping, crying. I, I forgot the street scene where they were calling me a white monkey. And, and where they were saying, go home. And, and where they were saying, America is imperialist. I forgot that. And I became, I began to see Kansas City and, and I began to see Detroit and I began to see Pittsburgh and I began to see New Orleans and I began to see New York, uh, Los Angeles. And I said, oh God, what can I do? The Lord said from coast to coast, homes will be torn to pieces like a tornado ripped into shreds and there will be thousands of little children that have to live with one parent. And I, I lived in a home, brought up in a home of, of great love in that home. We, 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 we love one another. And in my own marriage, we, we, my wife and I love one another. And I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. I said, God, how can it be that homes will be torn to pieces? God says such hate will come and it will boil up. It will boil up like a mighty wind and just twist the home to pieces. And divorce will be so terrible. And at this moment, friends, any child born today hardly has a 50-50 chance of living with mom and dad together. Isn't that terrible? Over half the population of tomorrow will not know what it means to have a home where they have a dad and a mom in the same house together. And there will be so many second and third and fourth marriages until little children won't know who to respect. They won't know who to love and they will hate and they will hate. Rebellion will be in their hearts. They, they will take that rebellion to school and that rebellion is already there. Teachers today are quitting by flocks. They said, I can't stand it anymore. The rebellion that's in the hearts of the students against their parents, against education, against authority, against discipline. They are against everything that creates character, that creates a good person. And it says, I, we, can't, we can't stand it. Now, God told me this before it came to pass. God told me that the spirit of rebellion would come, that it would attack the university campuses, that the teachers would have it in their hearts and they would get out like school children and in the scream in the streets and, and put up banners and, and show that there was deep rebellion and rebellion comes from hell and rebellion comes from the devil. And we've got a spirit of rebellion in the homes it will be, in all education it will be. And God said he wanted me to know that a spirit of rebellion would come into the labor movement such as we'd never seen before that would even try to shut down the whole of the United States of America. Just stop it because of a few men at the top, greedy, greedy for power, greedy for money, and, and greedy for prominence to have, their, to have their face on television. 
and their names on the front pages of newspapers, and that this anger in, in the labor movement uh, would drive the people into the streets like maniacs, screaming and crying and burning and turning over cars. And it's all that same spirit of rebellion in the home, in the divorce courts, in the educational institutions, and in your labor movement. He said there will be a, a demon of rebellion that will cause, that will cause, it will hurt so many. And I sat there in Manila, Philippines, weeping at my desk in a church that I built with my own hands, the largest church in the nation. And, and, and God was telling me to leave it and to come home and to live with you and to speak the truth and to say it out loud so people could hear it. And I said, God, I'm a servant of yours. I'll do anything that you ask me to do. With all my heart, I will do it. And I'll tell others and the others will do it also. Then the Lord kind of whispered in my ear. It wasn't loud and it wasn't hard. He said, and son, the, the Americans will change in their morals. And I said, in, in, in what way? He says, so far, homosexuality has been something behind the doors. He said, it is a spirit that comes upon a man that will make him lust for the body of another man. And, and the Lord said, would you just read Romans? And I opened my Bible to Romans. He said, look in, in chapter one. And I said, all right, all right, Lord. And I began reading in verse uh, 23 uh, and, uh, and in Romans chapter one. And it said, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. He says, you see, they're gonna worship images right in your own country. And, and made like unto corruptible man, and like birds. Many of the, uh, of the idols of the, of the heathen are half bird and half human, and, and four-footed beasts. And many of them have beast bodies, you know, and, and man parts in their bodies. And creeping things, whereunto God says he gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts. Th these evil things were created by lustful hearts against God. The same reason Lucifer got thrown out of heaven. Pagan religions are in the same state of rebellion against God as, as they were. He said to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. To dishonor their own bodies. Oh, I've been in the heathen temples around the world. You can't imagine the immoralities that take place there as, as they dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25 says, and they change the truth of God into a lie. You go back far enough, you, 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 you go back to Noah and his three sons, and the whole world believed in the living God, the mighty Jehovah who created heaven and earth. They all did. And from that to Abraham's time, which was 10 generations, they changed. And, and this is when all this took place. They changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worshiped and served the creature, the creature, more than the creator, which is the almighty himself, who was blessed forever. And for this cause, God gave them up unto, the, uh, uh, unto vile affections. God just gave them up. And when he did, it was like Sodom like Sodom and Gomorrah, you see, to vile affections. It says their women change the natural use of their bodies against nature. And the men, uh, leaving the natural use of the women, burned, look at that word, burned, burned in, in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. Uh, which was to me, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind uh, to do those things which, which are not convenient. And look at the last verse 32. It says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, of death, and not only do the same, but the if they even have pleasure in those things, if they have pleasure in those things, God says, these things will come. And they, the sixth thing God told me, I don't like to talk about. God told me that on television, just like you have homosexuality, claiming their rights and, and boasting and seeing them carry on 
on, on television. He says that bestiality will become the same. That women will say, my, my dog is nervous and, and my dog can't stand it and I have to give him sex. And when I give him sex, uh, then, 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 then he becomes normal again. And bestiality will become a prominent thing in America where people will, will lay with animals. And, and, and the Bible says they that do such things are worthy of death. Now, God told me that these things were going to come to pass. I had not seen them at that time, you see. But God said, these things shall come to pass. You might say, did he tell you that something good would come? Yes, or I would have asked to die at that, at that desk in Manila. He did. He told me, he said, and son, you will witness the mightiest revival the human race has had. And I said, oh God, really? And he said, in Acts chapter 2, uh, you can read it. It says in verse 17, it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters. They shall prophesy and your young men, they shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on the servants and the handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And, and so God said, yes, in the last days, a revival such as you have, have, have never seen will come to pass. And I will be part of that revival. And that's the reason I am so deeply involved in television. That's the reason I seek more stations in order that we might make it a wider scope of getting the gospel there. It's one thing to be on a station for an hour a day and then putting the devil on for the rest of the time. It's another thing for God to have the station 24 hours a day. God help every one of us to man a station in every city in the United States. To, to, be, to be willing, to be willing to sacrifice anything and everything in order to have our own television outreach in every city. Our own station that belongs to Jesus. And I urge you to, to, to pray that this mighty revival will have free course and that when it comes, that your heart will be open for it, that my heart will be open for it, and that we shall see what God wants to do because these are the last days. Our scripture here said, in the last days, just before the Lord Jesus Christ returns again, these are the things that we shall see. But you say, how about the other things? Well, the Bible says there will be a great falling away before the coming of the Lord. But it also says there will be a mighty outpouring of his spirit upon our sons and our daughters. And, and the old men and the young men shall all have an outpouring of his spirit. You'll have to decide which group to be with. Whether you want to be with dead churchianity and denominationalism that doesn't believe in the miraculous, does not believe in the power of God, doesn't believe in the anointing of God. Or whether you want to change over and say, I want to be with the latest thing God is doing. I want to do with the greatest thing God is doing. And then the circle will be complete back to the original Pentecost. When at that point in time, the former rain and the latter rain, which is impossible in nature, shall come at the same time. And we shall have a double portion of the mighty inflow and outflow of the great power uh, of the living God. The Lord told me that at the proper time, I could release this. As far as I know, this is the first time I have given all seven of these things that God told me to do and that I would see in the United States of America. I mentioned one and two of them from place to place, but this is the first time that I know about that I have given all seven of them. I have not spoken upon the different topics explicitly, you see, and in its finality, I could leave that to you. But God has told me that these are the seven things to look for. These are the things that will be apparent in these last days. And that as we see these things, the Lord Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads. You're not to be broken. You're not to be hurt. You are not to be cast down, but you are to lift up your head, Jesus said, and rejoice. <laughs> How can you rejoice with all the sorrows in the world, all the pitiful conditions in the world? How can you rejoice? Yes, we can. We can rejoice. You say, why? 
Our redemption draws nigh. That's what Jesus said. When we see these things come to pass, we know that Jesus is coming soon. We're living in the final moments of this dispensation of grace. And living in the final moments before that he that promised to come will come. And he shall take us to be forever with himself. But before he comes, the church shall be grand. The church shall be glorious. The church shall be mighty. The church shall have, have, have words to speak of authority that will make commands upon sin and the devil, and they cannot be resisted. And we're living in that moment, dramatic moment. We're living in that moment, prophetic moment, where these things are apparent, and God is saying to you and to me, now is the time. Now is the time. Stand up clean up, move up, <laughs> get going. This is, the most, this is the most prophetic moment in the, all the history of mankind just before the return of our Lord and Savior from heaven. I do want to hear from you. I do want to hear from you. Please, in Jesus' name, you may write to me, Lester Sumrall, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, zip code 46624. I'd like for you to be part of what God is going to do in this last hour. Don't sit complacently. Gear up and let's say we'll drive like Jehu and we will throw Jezebel overboard and we will remove the apostate out of their offices and we will set in focus the mighty movements of God that can turn the world upside down before Jesus comes. So we will be looking forward to hearing from you. Your prayers I will appreciate because it's some, with some reluctance that I, that I release my heart to tell you the seven things that brought me home from being a full-time missionary on the field uh, to establishing myself in this country and from here speak uh, to the world that's out there. We're speaking to more people in foreign countries than ever before, and we're glad we can do it. We love you, and thank you very much.